I'm Vonnie Sweetland, your host of Tough Topics on the News Forum. It's hard to discuss mainstream media critically because this show itself is a part of it. But with some complaining, mainstream media is biased and flawed, and a plethora of new outlets and publications becoming commonplace for many consumers, I do ask myself, what are we missing? And what are some of those flaws if they do exist? What is the state of Canadian media? Well, here to join us with the goal of unpacking these topics is Jeff Samet, host of Canada Now on Sirius XM Canada. Thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us this morning. Well, thank you, Vonnie, for, for asking and for being a, a frequent guest on my show as well. It's, it's nice <laughs> to see you in person. Yes, likewise. We, we've done each other's show now, and of course I've done yours for over a year, and we were just saying before we came on to air that it's our first time seeing each other. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. It's, great. it's great to be on with you and get to see you. Thanks for this. Yes, of course. Well, look, you've been a host in Canadian media for a very long time, and for those of our viewers who may not be familiar, can you walk us through a bit of your background uh, in the industry and, and what you do now? Well, uh, radio, radio, radio. I've been <laughs> radio for my gosh over a quarter of a century, and I think uh, uh, my face might show that uh, at this point. Um, but yeah, I, I started at uh, at Humber College. I studied at, at, at Humber College in Toronto. Even before that, I was already working in radio at the University of uh, Toronto at a radio station there. And uh, making uh, hopefully all of my mistakes there and then getting into school and coming out of that, I spent many years, uh, 18 years actually in sports radio uh, locally uh, in Toronto and did some news talk as well for a couple of years. And I've been at Sirius XM uh, for uh, over five years now. Um, and it's uh, it been it's been quite an education throughout all of that. It has been in talk radio. And, you know, I thought conversation in sports talk radio would be polarizing you know <laughs> you either love the toronto maple leafs or you hate the toronto maple leafs uh and then you get into news talk and especially in the last few years with everything that's gone on in the world politically um, culturally oh absolutely conversation i think as far as my career and how i feel i don't think the conversation has never been more polarizing, Vani. It's a it, it's a very odd thing now. It's yeah. you know either you're with me or you're against me, and it's uh, yeah. You know, and of course, I notice it as well. I mean, as you know, I I write for several publications, and when I put out an opinion piece, uh, I see it in my inbox and in my emails. And people are very divisive right now. And like you say, it's either you're with me or you're against me. And I think it almost does a disservice as far as media is concerned because people start being afraid to discuss certain certain topics. Well, absolutely. And, and you know, Vani, I think I might be in the minority. And I, and I hope I'm not, and I hope I'm wrong about that. But I feel like I'm in the minority because what I want to do in my role as a, a member of the media is not to convince people of anything, but it's to have a conversation with somebody that might be like-minded, but I, I usually seek out someone that would have an opposite opinion of mine because I want to hear what they have to say because it might change my mind. But I want the listener to walk away from a conversation that I have with somebody and say, all right, that's given me something to think about. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, you know, I'm right. You know, that, that's what a listener might say. But it might be somewhat of an education for them to, to walk away and to give them some food for thought. And, and, and I feel like I'm in the minority because I don't have any kind of an agenda. I, I just want people to be entertained, to get a bit of information and to walk away thinking, all right, well. I learned something. Yeah, like, you know, be it from me or from the guest. And I really want the guest on any guest on my show, yourself included, Vani, to, to shine. You're the star of the show. I want to hear what you have to say. You know, I have my show every day, Monday to Friday. People get to hear what I have to say all the time. And I want uh, the guests to really shine. So I... I think now when I'll say to somebody that, well, I don't have any kind of an agenda. Like I, I don't swing to the left politically or to the right necessarily. Um, maybe one a little bit more so than, than the other, but I want the listener to decide for themselves. And I think that's met with some scratching heads. Like, really, are you for real? You're not <laughs> trying to convince me of, 
of anything. No, I'm not. I just want to have a healthy, di healthy dialogue. And as I've said so many times on this show, healthy dialogue is key to moving us forward. We're going to talk with Jeff Samet, host of Canada Now on Sirius XM, just after this break. Without being politically motivated, and I know sometimes that's hard because even as hosts, we do have our own positions and beliefs, but where do you think government stands with respect to ensuring Canadians are receiving accurate information, be it from news, radio, print, et cetera? I don't trust it. Uh, I, I, I really don't. I, I think... Um... I think as a viewer, as a news consumer, if we're getting news from the media, if we're getting news from government, we always have to be skeptical. I think we always, Vani, have to be doing our homework. Uh, I think, I mean, take, for example, here in Ontario right now in terms of the pandemic, I'm not calling anybody a liar, but I am pointing out that there is an election coming up later in the year. If we're going to hear uh, about numbers, about what might be going on with the pandemic through the government, uh, the provincial government here in Ontario, we do have to keep in mind that there is an election that's coming up. And that's not new. That happens with conservative leadership. That happens with liberal leadership. That happens everywhere. So I, I right. think... We are receiving news from the government. I, I, we, we have to take everything we hear now with a grain of salt. And maybe that's the way it's always been. And we just had too much trust in our sources in years past. But we've learned a lot over the last number of years, the last number of decades. And I don't think we could take anything at face value. No. I, I, think, I think we can mistrust where we get our news from but that just means doing a little bit of digging and doing having a little bit of understanding and hearing opposite views and independent to, research absolutely i i think there is more responsibility on the news consumer these days to fully understand what we just consumed and why we heard what we've heard there are many times vani now I'm dovetailing into media here, but there are many times, Vani, where I have guests on and regular guests that I call friends that would uh, send me news links and say, hey, I want to talk about this or I want to talk about that. And I'll read the link and I'll read the headline and, and the article and I'll go, mm, I want to find out a little bit more about the outlet. And I'll do a little bit of digging on the outlet and find that they lean one way more towards another politically. So there right. is a agenda. So I'll have to read another article about a story from a different source to get some balance. And that's just what I do as a radio host. But I think that's what we have to do as news consumers as well. We, yeah. we have to receive our news from whatever source it is from and then say, well, why am I hearing that? And, and you might do some digging and go, well, okay, that was legit. You know, I, I firmly believe what they're saying. You might arrive at that, but I think you have to do the homework to make sure that's where it's coming from. Yeah, and I love doing opinion pieces because I always say for people who read my content, it's very clear that it's Vonnie Sweetland's opinion. <laughs> it doesn't have to be fact. Uh, it doesn't have to be your perspective. Frankly, it's mine. Um, and you read it, and if you take away something from it, great, that's the hope. Um, but, you know, we've also got to be careful about social media because on social media, you don't know who's behind the information you're consuming all of the time. And I've seen people, even in my own personal circle of friends, who have taken something at face value from social media and believe it to be true, only to find out later that it was completely false. And the thing about social media as well, Vani, is that many would have a habit, and that's not everybody, but many would have a habit of going on social media and following those that are like-minded, especially yep. with the pandemic. I, I think we have views on the pandemic, and if views out there differ from our own, then there are many that would say, well, I'm not going to follow that person anymore. They don't know what they're talking about, clearly, because they don't agree with me. Yeah. And then yeah. the find those on social media that are like-minded. And I think more so that people would go to social media, not 
as a way of obtaining news, but more so with reassurance. I think they want to go there to feel comfortable and go, yeah, that's what I think. And and, and I agree with that. And then they close social media and go on with their lives, feeling much better because their, their opinions have been echoed. And I think that's, I think that's a very dangerous game. I think that's, that's very close minded. Because it just reassures you that you're right. And and then you leave the situation thinking you're always right. When in fact, you know, a, a healthy dialogue requires you to sometimes be wrong. I, I, I believe so. And, and Vani, I'm not pointing the finger at everybody else necessarily, because if I wasn't, if I wasn't a talk show host, I might do the same. We'll be right back after these messages with Jeff Salmon. There have been many allegations online and on social media that paint mainstream Canadian media as liberal leaning, um, uh, claiming that these outlets uh, have a goal of parlaying partisan information to viewers and listeners. We were just talking about this a little bit, but are these fair accusations, where do they come from? Uh, and if they are not true, where do we go from here about really reassuring people that the news they're consuming is in fact safe and, and non-biased? Well, that that very well might be true, uh, you know. But again, to to reiterate a point made earlier, Vani, I, I think everything you you hear is uh, you have to get take it with a, a grain of salt. There are some news media outlets that might be getting some help from the government. You know that could be happening, uh, be it here in Canada or in other parts of the world. So I can see that. I I can see how. Uh, some media outlets would be leaning one way uh, over a- another for uh, a greater purpose. Maybe um, because of funding or whatever it may be. Absolutely. Uh, access as well. Uh, media access. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to be shut out. Um, so I could see how one would believe that I, I can, I, I can absolutely see that, you know, but you know, come the the next election, and should there be a change in leadership years down the road, could we say that uh, the media would shift uh, in a, in a different direction? Uh, you know, we could see that. We could see how certain media outlets might be overtaking others. Uh, so we could very well see a shift. And if that happens or that doesn't happen, again, with everything we consume. We have to understand what that media outlet um, uh, might be, um, you know, wh- where they might be skewing, who yes. they might be leaning skewing. towards. Exactly. And that could happen with uh, the, the writer, him or herself. That could happen with the outlet uh, itself as well. And that could be misinformation that is fed right from the government. As you can see, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it's it's healthy to, to, like we said, independent research and get your facts from a multitude of different sources and then really just compile and compare. I think that's the only way to ensure that you are getting accurate information that isn't uh, biased. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it, you know, when it comes right down to the host themselves, Vani, like, like for you, um, like we've talked about a, a wide variety of, of topics, Fonny, but what I like about you and why I keep having you on the show, and I think what makes you such a, a great uh, talk show host, is your empathy, is that you're, you're empathetic. Oh, I know you. that I'm going to come to you and I'm going to hear a wide variety of opinions. Uh, you're not going to shout anybody down and uh, you're going to let everybody be heard. And that's a comfortable place that I try to provide on my show, which is not to say that you know, wall to wall on on my show, it's all political, it's all polarizing conversations. I like to have a lot of lighthearted fun as well and talk about things that in the end really don't matter. But I want to create a, a safe space on my show where everybody can come on and weigh in, where everybody can come in and listen. And, uh, you know, you might not agree with every opinion you hear, but you're going to hear a wide variety of opinions and you're going to walk away saying, well, I agreed with some of that. I didn't agree with a lot of it, but, you know, I got to hear a healthy conversation. And I, I think I, I think as members of the media, we have to do a good job. Um, you know, if you are covering news events that you have to do so fairly, but, you know, here on uh, on talk shows that you have to be empathetic 
and that you have to hear all points of view. I mean, take anti-vaxxers, for example. I mean, for me, I want everybody to be vaccinated, but I'm empathetic towards those that uh, have not been vaccinated and don't want to be vaccinated because I want to understand why. I yeah. want to understand why a person feels that way. And in the end, I, I, I might not agree, but I'm going to take the time to stop and, and listen and to ask why. And I think we have to, I think we have to, we all have to do that and be more empathetic and stop and ask why. Yeah. And I think as journalists, for us, it's, it's just in our nature to be inquisitive. Uh, we like to know why people have the thoughts and, and opinions and perspectives that they do. So for me, um, I, I'll echo what you said. And it's the same thing I try to do on this show is really just give people a space to be comfortable and share their perspectives, whatever they are. I mean, I hear people every day, whether it's in the line at the coffee shop talking about different subjects. Some I agree with, some I don't. But I think what we need to make sure we're always doing is giving a space for people to have conversations. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and a safe space for listeners to, to come or viewers in your case. Exactly. Uh, to, well, just hear- after these messages, we'll be right back with Jeff Samet. We're just coming back from break. I'm going to let you finish your thought, Jeff. You were saying... Well, I was just, you know, saying, you know, about about um, about empathy and about listening to to the other side and uh, and creating safe spaces for those that might come into, you know, a show and and say, all right, well, so and so is on the show, and you know, they're going to reinforce what I'm I'm already thinking, but then they might be hearing somebody else and saying, oh, well, actually, they make a good point, so it might change some minds as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, for me, I like to have people on that agree, disagree. Actually, I think it makes it a better episode when it's somebody who disagrees because then you're both bringing something to the table. And I think that's the best case scenario for the viewer, for the listener. Most of my guests, Vani, are um, people that don't have the same viewpoints with me, that certainly have different experiences that I do and that come on talking about things I really know nothing about. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's a long list. Uh, (laughs) A lot of people on uh, for that because I don't know everything. I'm not always right. And I want to have people on that might correct me um, or that might highlight my being right, you know, because it might give me an opportunity to 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 really highlight what is in fact going on and uh and then you know again the listener could walk away making up their own mind so i I think we have to keep inviting those discussions onto our radios and and, and into our living rooms uh, through through our televisions and and keep that going because if if we stop listening you know then it's going to be us versus them all the time and, and we just can't have that we can't. And before you go, uh, I want to ask you, what are your thoughts on this convoy coming to an end? We know that it's all the rage everybody's talking about right now. Uh, Ottawa, Toronto, there's a lot going on with the trucker convoy. Uh, how do you see things shaping up? Well, uh, look, uh, I, the longer it goes, it feels like the more chance that it's not going to end uh, in a peaceful way. Uh, and, and it's unfortunate because... I think there had been a small group of people that wanted to make their voices heard, agree with them or not, that wanted to make their voices heard. uh, And then it turned into all of this uh, for whomever who might have been behind it and uh, whomever might have let this go on uh, far too long. Uh, You know, I, I think once upon a time, there were people that needed to be heard and uh, that maybe needed to have a discussion with. Right. And And what role does media play in all of that, right? I mean, even for me, I've thought at different points, do I go out there with a camera? But then when you do that, is that adding steam to something that you you want to actually see calm down? So uh, even for media, I think it's tricky. Who do you, who are you giving a voice to, you know, when you walk out into a big crowd, like, especially at this point, but when you walk out into a big crowd like that, uh, you might be stumbling upon uh, the person that really is not there for the purpose with which everybody was out there uh, originally or what originally was thought. Um, but I think 
as time goes on, uh, we may or may not learn a bit more about who was behind this, what was ultimately the motivation, what the message truly was, and, and what the message ended up being. Yeah. Um, well, look, I mean, for me, I've said many times, I respect people's right to protest peacefully in this country. I've seen a lot of great things come from protesting, uh, even during the Black Lives Matter movement. And we've seen with that movement, there were some bad actors there as well. I think no matter what the protest, uh, the, the mandate or, or purpose of it is, you're always going to have some people there doing good and some people there doing bad. That's my take. Yeah, there's going to be a, a group of people or groups of people out there that are seeing another group of people getting attention and then maybe raining on that parade. Uh, yeah. And maybe that's a case here, but I think we're going to be unpacking this for some time. I agree. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for coming on the show. Everybody, host of Canada Now, Jeff Samet on SiriusXM. Take care and thanks for joining us. Monty, thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Take care. Well, having healthy discussions is important. I've said all the time on this show and on other shows that I appear on, I think inviting guests on and discussing things that are not always comfortable is important. If we only talk to people we agree with, we're not gonna move the conversation forward. We're not gonna learn anything. So I thank you for joining us here today on Tough Topics. And until next time, all voices matter.